There are five classifications of microbes based on their optimal growth temperature. These are the psychrophiles, mesophiles, thermophiles, hyperthermophiles, and the psychrotropes. We'll start at the mesophiles. Mesophiles are microbes that grow best in moderate temperatures, where the temperature is neither too hot nor too cold. Their optimal growth temperature is between 20 degrees to 45 degrees Celsius. Example of these are the Staphylococcus aureus and the Listeria monocytogenes. Next is the psychrophiles, or known as the cryophiles. These microbes are capable of growth and reproduction between minus 20 degrees to 10 degrees Celsius. They are mostly found in the polar regions and in the ocean bed. Examples of these are some species of Pseudomonas bacteria. Next is the thermophiles. These microbes love to grow at high temperature between 41 to 122 degrees Celsius. They can be found in boiling lakes and near to an underwater volcanic vent. Many thermophiles are archaea. They belong to the domain Archaea. Next is we have the hyperthermophiles microbes. These microbes live in extremely hot environment from 60 degrees Celsius and above. And microbes like this are also in the domain of Archaea. Now the difference between hypothermophiles and thermophiles is they can live at much higher temperature than the thermophiles. Then lastly, we have the psychrotrops. These microbes grow from 0 to 20 degrees. These microbes can still reproduce at refrigeration temperature. That is why food in the fridge still spoils, because these microbes can still grow in the fridge. Now, we'll discuss why the pH of control media has to be controlled. And what is the significance of osmotic pressure to microbial growth? When we say pH, it is the measure of how acidic or basic a water is. The range goes from 0 to 14, with 7 being neutral. pH lower than 7 is acidic, and pH above 7 is basic. Microbes such as bacteria are very sensitive to the hydrogen ion concentration in their environment. Their proteins or enzyme are affected by pH. If the pH level is not suited for a microbe, its metabolism is halted. Microbes like the acidophiles can tolerate pH level as low as 1.0. pH level is not the only factor that affects microbial growth. Osmotic pressure is also a very important factor when it comes to microbial growth. When we say osmotic pressure, it is the force of water that exerts on a semi-permeable membrane of the cell. When microbes are exposed to hypotonic environment, where the concentration of the solute is much lower than in the inside the cell, water would rush in into the cell and the cell eventually will burst. On the other hand, at the hypertonic environment where the concentration of the solute outside the cell is higher than the inside, water from the cell would be sucked out from the cell resulting in dehydration and the cell eventually die. When it comes to oxygen requirement, microbes are divided into two. Some microbes require oxygen to grow but some microbes do not require oxygen in order to grow. But they are classified into five categories. The first one is the obligate aerobes. Obligate aerobes are bacteria that require oxygen to live. Example is the Microbacterium tuberculosis. Next is the facultative anaerobes. These microbes can survive without oxygen. But when they use oxygen, they can generate more energy and grow better. E. coli is an example of facultative anaerobe microbe. 
Next is the obligate anaerobes. These microbes does not need oxygen because oxygen is toxic to them. Example of these bacteria are the species that cause tetanus. Next is the aerotolerant anaerobes. These bacteria do not require oxygen and not harmed by it either. Example of these microbes are the lactobacillus species. Then we have the micro aerophiles. This bacteria requires oxygen, but they require concentration of oxygen that is less than the atmospheric level. If they are exposed to atmospheric level of oxygen, they die. Aerobic organism can survive using oxygen because they have enzymes that breaks down toxic form of oxygen. Superoxide free radical is a form of oxygen that has an extra electron, which is very reactive and thus toxic to cells. This type of oxygen disrupts cell processes, causing the cell to die. Organisms that thrive with oxygen has an enzyme called superoxide dismutase. These enzymes convert oxygen into a hydrogen peroxide, which is less toxic. And additional enzymes called catalase and peroxidase, which convert hydrogen peroxide into water and stable form of oxygen. A biofilm comprises any syntrophic consortium of microorganisms in which cells stick to each other and often also to a surface. These adherent cells become embedded within a slimy extracellular matrix that is composed of extracellular polymeric substances or EPS. Biofilm is a system that can be adapted internally to environmental condition by its inhabitants. Biofilms may form on living or non-living surfaces and can be prevalent in natural, industrial, and hospital settings. Biofilm formation can be divided into five stages. Initial reversible attachment, irreversible attachment, maturation, and dispersion as shown in the figure. The initial contact of moving planktonic bacteria with the surface is the starting point, which is still reversible at this stage. The bacteria will then start to form a monolayer and will produce an extracellular matrix or slime for protection. The matrix consists of extracellular polysaccharides, structural proteins, cell debris, and nucleic acids, referred to as the extracellular polymeric substances. The initial steps of the matrix formation are dominated by the extracellular DNA, whereas polysaccharides and structural proteins take over later on. In these stages, the formation of microcolonies takes place which exhibits significant growth and cell-to-cell -cell communication such as quorum sensing. The biofilm grows in a 3D manner and the attachment is now irreversible. In the last stage, some cells of the mature biofilm start to detach and disperse into the environment as planktonic cells again, to potentially start a new cycle of biofilm formation. Biofilms can form on the teeth of most animals and forms as a dental plaque, causing tooth decay and gum disease. Biofilms can also cause cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is a hereditary disorder characterized by lung congestion and infection and malabsorption of nutrients by the pancreas. A chemically defined media is a medium in which all the chemicals used are known. No yeast, animal, or plant tissue is present. A chemically defined medium is a growth medium suitable for the culture of microbes or animal cells of which all of the chemical components are known. A chemically defined medium is entirely free of animal-derived components and represents the purest and most consistent cell culture environment. Complex media contains extracts and digest of yeast, 
meat, or plants, and precise chemical composition of the medium is not known. Amounts of individual components are undetermined and viable. Nutrient broth, triptic soy broth, and chocolate agar are examples of complex media. Candle jar is a container in which a lit candle is introduced before sealing the container's airtight lid. The candle's flame burns until extinguished by oxygen deprivation, which creates a carbon dioxide rich and oxygen poor atmosphere in the jar. Candle jars are used to grow bacteria requiring an increased carbon dioxide concentration. Selective media generally selects the growth of a desired organism, stopping the growth or killing non-desired organisms. Example of a selective media is the Makonki agar. It contains bile salts and crystal violet which interfere with the growth of many gram-positive bacteria and favors the growth of gram-negative bacteria. Differential media contain compounds that allow groups of microorganisms to be visually distinguished by the appearance of the colony or the surrounding media. Example of a differential media is the Streptococcus eosin methylene blue, which is differential for lactose and sucrose fermentation. Enrichment media used to favor the growth of microbes that may be found in very small numbers. Unlike selective medium, it does not necessarily suppress the growth of other microbes. It is used mainly for fecal and soil samples. Example is blood agar, which nutritionally rich whole blood supplements the basic nutrient. Since viruses require a living host cell for replication, infected host cells are cultured and grown, and then the growth medium can be harvested as a source of virus. Strict plate techniques is used to grow bacteria on a growth media surface so that individual bacterial colonies are isolated and sampled. In doing the strict plate method, First, we label an agar plate. Second, heavily saturate a swab with hydrated material. Use a sterile loop to transfer a colony or colonies from one agar plate to another. Third, gently inoculate the plate with the swab or sterile loop three to four times using a sterile loop for each streak. Lastly, immediately incubate the inoculated plate. Microbial growth requires some control in order to prevent contamination and eventually prevent illness. There are many ways of controlling microbial growth, and it is important for our daily lives. Method includes sterilization, disinfection, and many more. Sterilization is the process of destroying all microbial life on an object. This includes inducing heat and using ultraviolet rays. Temperature and radiation are greatly involved in this process. Disinfection is the elimination of microorganisms from inanimate objects or surfaces. Antiseptics are agents that kills and prevent the growth of microbes, but it is safe to use on human tissues. Hand sanitizers may not eliminate microbes totally, but it reduces microbial number to a safe level. Temperature is a big factor in controlling microorganisms. Microbes have minimum and maximum range of temperature in order to survive and reproduce. Boiling water can eliminate most of the microbes present in the water within minutes. Viruses such as hepatitis can survive boiling water for up to half an hour. Endospores like certain species of Colostridium and bacillus can survive for hours of boiling. Incineration are also used in sterilizing inoculating loops in the laboratory. Pasteurization is used to kill certain types of bacteria by controlling the range of temperature. Osmotic pressure is also used to control microbial growth. 
Different types of bacteria can either live in a hypotonic and hypertonic environment. Bacteria and fungi have strong shell that prevents them from bursting, thus they can live in a hypotonic environment, where water would likely flow into the cell. Hypertonic environment can eliminate microbes because hypertonic environment absorbs water from the cell, thus dehydrating the cell and preventing it from growing. Ultraviolet radiation is best at destroying microorganisms because UV light can be absorbed by the nucleic acid and destroys the DNA of the cell. X-rays and gamma rays are much stronger type of radiation. They can cause unwanted mutation to cell DNA and can ionize molecules of water and other types of molecules forming radicals or unpaired electrons. These electrons can disrupt cell processes and thus killing the cell.